All right, welcome to the August 20th, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python User Group Meeting. A fascinating meeting because we have release 1.00 out in the world. Well done all. Uh, so in the topics today, we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about the export functionality. Um, assuming Jamie is here, I hadn't, yep, he's here. So we'll talk about that. Um, talk about the proposal to move um, Akapai to OWF and the other impacts of that. Um, if Patrick's here, we're going to talk about he is and point to add, add data integrity proof to any document. And if we have time, um, removing the deprecated AIP 1.0 protocols. Um, Daniel's already made considerable progress there on connections, and we can talk about issue credential V1 and present proof V1. So all of that today, um, reminder, we are recording the call, and so um, the recording will be posted after the meeting um, here on the meeting page. Reminder, this is a Linux Foundation Hyperledger Foundation meeting, so the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger code of conduct. Please keep those in mind. Um, welcome introductions and announcements from anyone, anyone who wants to take the mic now to either adjust the agenda, add something, um, introduce themselves if they're new to the community or any other announcements. The mic is now open. Step up. I'll just say hi, I'm Brian Bellendorf, I'm CTO of the Open Wallet Foundation. I'll be on tomorrow's call talking more specifically about the, the move, but I thought I'd just uh, join today uh, at Sean's invitation, actually, um, uh, to, uh, to, to just come up to speed on the issues that are important to this community. Awesome. Good to have you here. All right. Um, so release 1.00 is in the books. We have it released. Um, so far, all's well. We've had a ton of PRs submitted and some merged since then. So we're moving pretty quickly towards um, the next release, but release 1.0 is out there. Um, last week, um, I added um, a, a plugins um, web page uh, that people might not have seen. Plugins.acapi.org contains um, the documentation, minimal that it is, on um, the, the plugins repository with developer notes and so on, and the list of plugins that exist for Acapi. So this is looking good. Again, um, little concerned um, in looking at some of these that the documentation is a little light on some of them. So love to see more added to these, um, but at least we've got um, a place here, a landing page um, for where the plugins are, a release status of what's the state of, of the um, plugins. So notice, for example, that um, Jamie did a release today so that we're up to 1.00 and all except the Kafka events plugin is verified. Um, its integration tests are passing for the 1.00 release. So that's awesome. And I know um, Daniel said he was going to take a look at the Kafka events um, plugin. So that documentation is out there. And of course, on acapi.org itself, it now says that we are on 1.00. And so that's out there. I'll remove this RC6 later today. Um, and we'll keep this documentation up to date. But this is generated out of, out of the um, latest information. Um, can't remember, there was some document we added, yes, in deploying, um, there is a new document on enabling BBS signature support. So that got added to the deployment um, documentation. So um, for those, a reminder that we removed by default the um, BBS signatures um, for from the artifacts that we generate, the default artifacts, um, and um, and so that we would support M1, uh, the uh, M1 architecture out of the box. So uh, ARM architecture, sorry, for M1 Max and later. 
Um, so for developer convenience, we've made it harder to use BBS. They're still supported, but a little harder to use. So the documentation is there. So that's most of what you need to know about 1.0. Um, any other questions or comments we want to make right now on, on 1.00? Oh, one more thing I did want to call out. Um, up front is the long-term support policy. This again was added as part of um, 1.0. Um, we have not declared 1.00 as the LTS. Um, we'll see whether we need a 1.01 or or anything else. So we'll let it um, uh, continue a bit and, and feedback come in and then we'll declare uh, an LTS. Um, right now, um, where is it listed? Oh, I know why. Sorry, right in the README here are the current LTS releases. So 012 is the current LTS, 011 end of life, January 2025. Once we declare a 1.0x um, release as um, the LTS, um, we'll update this to say the end of life for 012 will be nine months after we declare it, and the 1.0 will become the current LTS release. And that will be the sequence going forward. And we are, uh, we do have a GitHub Actions job that checks for um, security vulnerabilities, and those are the things that will be fixed in the 012 and 011 releases. So there you go. Any other questions or comments about 1.0? Okay, um, Jamie, turning over to you to talk about export and what you've done on exporting um, wallets and um, contents of um, tenant wallets. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so this came up because we wanted to do stuff with our Ask Our Wallets and multi-tenant mode we wanted to be able to take a wallet out of one agent and put it in another place and stuff like that um and i'm still working on that but it's it's kind of blocked by aska right now but anyway that's a bit of the background um and then we were trying to think of where the best place to put this was and we have this aries akapai tools repo which all it had was the Akapai wallet upgrade from Indy to Askar. And we thought this was a good place to put it. Um, what I did was kind, to, kind of um, restructured this. So now there's subdirectories. So the upgrade is untouched, but there's a tools uh, subdirectory here. And if you install the the install now is called basically if you pip install it you have both of these options now to do different stuff with um right now the only one additional one is export so why this came up is if you spend any time developing in the cloud agent especially when you're beginning is you don't really know what's in the wallet and you, it's really hard to debug stuff or tell what basically the tables are. Like Askar is not a normal database. So I'll just uh, show that. So I have a super basic Faber agent here. It just has a schema and cred def. But um, if you connect to it, this is SQLite database. So you have these four tables. This is described in Askar pretty well, but if you go to look at anything like the items, I have to remember how to type. Everything's uh, encrypted. You can't tell what's in here at all. The only way is basically to print stuff out from the from your code and look at it or use a debugger, you can see stuff, but Sometimes you just want to like an overview of the wallet. So there's an export function now. So you run Askar tools, 
with the strategy export, and then you point it to your database. So this works with Postgres as well. And then you just put the wallet name and wallet key, and then you run it. And then you'll get this little export thing. So it doesn't do anything complicated, just prints it to a JSON file and it groups everything. So this is what your actual tables would look like. Yeah, uh, as SQL. So you can actually see what all these objects look like. Hey, Jamie. Uh, yeah. I think you're you're showing your, uh, we're just seeing your VS Code page. Um, it looks like you're trying to show things, but we're not seeing it, just so you know. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had to open Zoom on my browser because I was having Yeah. Time. It's weird. It should... Did you share? Did you share screen or share just VS Code? Yeah, I shared my screen. Um, maybe if I put it on this screen, it'll work better. Can you see this at all? I even saw me for a second. It was horrifying. I think it's just really slow. It's too bad. Yeah. I don't really know what to do about it. It's just okay. Zoom not working. Um, um, actually, we're now seeing, actually, the VS Code was not updating. That's what it was. We're seeing what you did. I, I now see when I saw you go to the terminal, and, and now we can see what you did. Okay. And now we're uh, seeing the, the JSON. Yeah, this is basically all I wanted to show. So you run this command and it will yeah. export it to a JSON file. And then you can actually see everything without encryption. Um, all it does is group things by tables. So if you have like multiple values here, we'll group it in a JSON file. So I, it also has tests and stuff. And then if you, so this is like a way bigger file that has connections and everything. But I think this will be a useful debug, the developer tool, possibly a debug tool too. But that's basically all I wanted to show is. Okay. And the next plan is to be able to import it and notably import it by tenant as needed. Uh, yeah, so. I was making a tool to take uh, in multi-tenant mode, you can have either a single wallet or you can have each tenant in an individual wallet. And we want to be able to switch back and forth, but also to, to you should be able to take an, an uh, tenant right out of multi-tenant mode and put it somewhere else. So like yeah. tools like that might come up. And then yeah. basically this will be a place to put any tools that like run scripts on the database, I think. So things might come up, like I can't think of anything right now, but basically this repo is a place to put tools like this. And all you do is either pip install it or you can just clone the repo right in. Like this, it, I cloned Akapai tools right into my uh, Akapai development environment and then I just run it from here yeah um, so and yeah just to be clear what you exported was just a toy day a uh, toy wallet right it's not production system where you just expose the private keys to the recording so that anyone can just grab them no there's nothing you can do with this <laughs> okay good Excellent. but yeah it, it is a it is a, if you did this in a deployed environment, you'd have to be careful for sure not to expose your wallet key, obviously. All right. Yeah. I think like uh, just if you have like a new developer and they're confused by the wallet, getting them to do this would be really helpful. Yeah. I was yeah. confused by the wallet for a long time of what was in it and how to work with it and stuff. So this makes it a lot more clear. Good. 
so on the subject of not unintentionally exposing things, do we have plans to like add an option to encrypt the the export on the way out or anything like that? Or, or are we just going to say, just handle it carefully? Or, or what kind of is our approach there, I guess? Um, yeah, if you wanted to do this in a, like a production environment, then that would, should be added, I think, but yeah, it's none of that's done right now. It's just more a developer tool. Okay. Do you want to click the stop share button there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Scaring me looking at that. <laughs> okay. Um, proposal to move Akapai to OWF. So I've got a bit of a presentation. The plan um, for today is to sort of um, go through this and get the feel from the Akapai community on this specific question. But this presentation, I plan to evolve a little um, based on feedback here and then use tomorrow to talk about this question, which is more for the Akapai community to decide on, and then um, to cover the other questions around, okay, well, what, what dominoes fall if Akapai moves to OWF? What else happens? Um, so that's what this presentation is about. Um, as um, from a context, um, I meant to put three links in here. Sorry, I, I forgot to add this one. Um, the context presented last week was a um, mailing list message from John Jordan, uh, who I believe is here today, um, about the possibility of this and some of the motivations behind it. Um, we wanted to make it clear that this was a BC Gov proposal for the Akapai and Aries community, community to discuss whether we wanted to put an application in to OWF. Um, there is no guarantees that the application would be accepted. Um, and at the time John put that pr proposal out, no guarantees that the areas community would want to follow that. This is just VC Gov's proposal. So not to, not to put the cart before the horse, um, VC is proposing this, um, areas community can decide um, and, and we kind of would like to make this decision today. So um, as Akapai maintainers, um, please um, consider that. And then um, and then I'm going to go over a bunch of other issues that come from that. So previous presentation um, was given last week. So there's a link to that. Oops, I was going to shoot. Uh, let me share this link. I don't think I put it into the um, meeting, so I'll share the uh, this link in chat. So there you go. And then I also put um, in here a link to the um, recording from the Aries Working Group meeting last week. We talked about it a fair amount. Okay, um, so comments on from the Akapai community on the idea of applying to move into OWF. Um, this is pure discussion. If anyone has pros and cons, they want to say why we should or should not do this. Um, let's have that discussion and then see if we can get consensus. So does anyone have comments they'd like to bring up at this time that they've been thinking about? Go ahead. I can't see who's Daniel. Yep, that's me. Um, so just to, to comment, I guess, uh, the first thing I thought uh, when when hearing the proposal was, well, crap, uh, the Hyperledger Foundation has been, or, or yeah, the Hyperledger Foundation has been really good to the Aries community. Um, we have great support. Um, the team like has done basically everything we needed. And, and um, my initial thought was it would be a real bummer to lose that. Uh, but then it was pointed out to me that uh, the same staff that support us at Hyperledger are, are basically the same staff that would be supporting us at, at OWF. Um, and upon hearing that, I felt much better about the the possibility of, of moving to the OWF. So um, with that in mind, like I think it's doable. If we didn't have that, I'm not sure it would even be on the table, to be honest. But yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a huge... Um... 
selling point, if you will, for this idea is, um, you know, all of the things we've worked out and, and the Hyperledger Foundation has helped us with and, and guided and, and provided um, is really should be available. There will be a lot of um, the, the string change in the GitHub um, path will be an issue, no question. Um, uh, so we'll have to sort that out. Um, you know, from Hyperledger to Open Wallet Foundation, um, and then figuring out a name for Akapai. Um, likely it's going to stay Akapai, but maybe it becomes just Akapai instead of any sort of expansion. Um, and open to questions on the on the naming uh, or open to um, ideas on the naming um, as well, if we want to bring that up in the discussion, whether it's time to change the name and 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 adjust it. Any other comments? Patrick. Uh, I think it's a good idea. That's my comment. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, can we um I didn't quite make a full wait a full Nathan. A minute and a half, two minutes Nathan used to wait. It was painful. Um, I can't do that. But anyway, um if discussion, if no one has points to raise, comments, no one has even an opinion on the naming. So not an opinion on the naming, but, and, and I know you kind of like prefaced the whole conversation by saying like, this is like about Akapai rather than the full Aries community. And we'll, we'll talk about it in Aries working group call tomorrow. But I, I do think it's also important to, to note at least that while Akapai has the independence to move, uh, like we can do that. Yeah. Um, the, the impact of that would be felt by all of Aries if if stuff remained behind in Aries. Yeah. And I think in turn, that would also impact Akapai. So it's not, uh, we wouldn't be operating in a vacuum. Um, exactly. And and as I say, that's what the remainder of the slides address. Yeah. So um, I will go over a bunch of points and, and open the discussion, especially tomorrow, open the discussion. This is more the the other ones are more to prepare people for that um, from yeah. the Akapai community. So, Patrick. Um, so one thing that I pretty sure I understood is that uh, no matter what we do with Akapai, Aries will sort of dissipate and sort of segregate to other places. So like Aries in itself won't really have a meaning, if that makes sense. Uh, there was thoughts about the RFCs moving to diff or did come um, and some other components uh, going elsewhere. Uh, I know we had a similar discussion about Indy. So uh, I guess this is the part that I'm not too sure, like what will, like, let's say, okay, yeah. I can probably move to Open Wallet Foundation. Uh, there was talks about, you know, Ascar moving over to Wallet Foundation. Um, you know, what will Aries be, you know, uh, yeah. in result of um, all this? Those are the slides coming up, um, a bunch of options for those um, and more and questions related to those. So, yes. Right. Um, and for the name, you know, I'm going to put it out there. Credo pie, you know, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Shell? Uh, I'm assuming a, a logical transition uh, that would follow would be Aries Agent Test Harness moving there as well if this happened. Um, Again, on the on the next slides, I see two. We see two options, oh. and so we'll talk about those two. And definitely want your opinions on those. Okay. Okay. Um, does anyone object to Akapai putting in an application to move to OWF? The, the only mild hesitation I have is, is there room for us to be informed by the discussion that happens tomorrow before we like actually move on, on that application, I guess? Like if, if on the off chance that there's like really good points made tomorrow, like that we shouldn't do this. Yeah, the application will not go in before tomorrow. Okay. So you're right. Um, we could rescind it next week or, you know, but 
Um, I would kind of like to say the Akapai community tomorrow, the Akapai community is behind this or not. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm happy to leave that caveat that if, if a better, if we all agree that, you know, there's some better solution for the Aries community overall that Akapai should be part of where we would back out of that. Yeah. Okay. But barring that, um, does anyone object to Akapai applying to move into the o Open Wallet Foundation? All right. And does anyone abstain? All right, so that suggests to me that we have consensus that um, barring a pretty, uh, an unex unexpected um, proposal tomorrow, we would likely move forward with Akapai applying to move into OWF. So with that, we go on to the other parts of this. Um, so the first thing that comes up is, is there are already frameworks over there. Credo has moved, Aries VCX is deciding, and um, I've been in touch with the maintainers there, and they're going to make a call as to whether they would move or not. Um, the biggest question with, with that um, is, do we move as an Aries group, or do Steve, we move independently? You need to share your screen, man. Am I not sharing? At least not for me. I see it. I see it. Really? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Must be me. Okay. Okay. Um. So the BC government proposal, and we've talked about this with a couple, is that the the the, the projects move independently. Um. It really comes down to Aries VCX and Akapai. Um. But the biggest thing we don't want to lose is the Aries working group meeting and the interoperability. And so at this point, um, we would propose that, that the projects move independently, but we organize within OWF a cross-project interoperability meeting and, and working group. And probably something along the lines of wallet interoperability group um, that produces profiles, um, wallet interop profiles sort of to replace the AIP concept. Um, those interop profiles would probably not just be one across, but multiple covering different scenarios in different ecosystems. But um, there would obviously be at least one because we've been pretty successful with the AIP concept and and move over to um have those patrick you got your hand up uh yeah so i'm also in favor of moving independently as you mentioned there's really only icapi and aries vcx left so even if we move a group uh it's just these two sort of moving together mm -hmm. um which you know i like i guess like it could be interesting but at the same time why not move in independently and then create this model of interoperability between these different uh, projects. Second point, for the interop side, I'd like if we could approach the subject from not only testing like the frameworks and the project themselves, but also uh, catering to implementation. Um, in the VCA API call, there was one company who is building their VCA implementation with Credo. So I would very much want to find a way so that they can bring their not the credo part, but their solution, their platform into this interop space. Yeah. Um, and this way, like we could, you know, and instead of testing Akapai, well, we test traction, right? Or something like that. Like test the implementation first. Um, yeah, so like I'd like, uh, ideally both, right? So you can test the framework and implementations against each other. Maybe the frameworks can be like the, the references and then your implementation can just be how you use that project. So that, that's all I got to say. Okay. Sean? Yeah, thanks. Um, so why will my hand lower? Stop it. Um, so in regards to setting up a, a Aries working group type call, that's we will do that. 
100%. Uh, it was pretty clear on the call last week that that's an important part of the community's ability to organize and yeah. interoperability is also a huge part of OWF, one of one of OWF's big goals for the next year. So that's non-negotiable. You want it, you get it. That's not a yeah. problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, one other thing I'll throw out about moving independently is there's already other projects that 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 started up after Aries, but even though their their charter, if you will, read ex pretty much exactly the same as Aries, they chose not to be part of Aries. So we've already got a, a, an independent one. So I'm talking about Identis and Veramo. Um, both of those, if you read their description when they started up, it was exactly the same as Aries, um, well, but they didn't want to be part of it. So like, that's fine. I asked a question, like, why is Identus not like you read the readme for Identus and it's like, a Python, I know, right? Like just from the readme <laughs> and it's Python, but you know, yeah. they have a different approach and, and that's fine. That's not a problem. Yeah. But as you mentioned, like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah, never quite, I guess. Figure that Probably. out, and Veramo yeah. was you were way earlier than that, and it was the same thing. So yeah, okay. Um, next question up. So um, there are nineteen other repositories. This is sort of my cut of what would happen: is Ascar um, and Aries BBS signatures. I'm less clear on this one. Would go as separate projects. Certainly, Ascar would. Um. Sub to Akapai would be, you know, the ones with Akapai in the name. <laughs> Those make sense that they would all go as um, with it. To discuss would be Akrita, Aries Mediator Service, and Aries Endorser Service. All of those um, are right now particularly tied to Akapai, but don't have to be. And so there could be a um, argument that they go as as. Uh, in some other way, but they could certainly go as sub to Akapai. Um, I think these ones are are to be archived. Um, I don't know enough about these ones of where they would go. And I guess Swift and Kotlin would be our framework. So they would make a decision of, of where they go. Um, so we do need to contact the maintainers of those. And then um, the last two, um, one of them I'm going to cover on this page, um, but this is the one that I wanted to raise um, in answer to Shell's question. Um, Aries Agent Test Harness could go to OWF and expand beyond DIDCOM or to DIFF and keep as a DIDCOM test harness. So sort of rename to DIDCOM test agent test harness because it is um, highly DIDCOM oriented. And so that's an interesting question there. The Aries RFC um, have a number of, you know, what I call active um, uh, active protocols, and and so I I sort of um, proposed anything that is sort of active and a DIDCOM protocol should move into the DIDCOM working group at DIFF. Um, so the concepts probably don't need to because they're already in the spec. The features would move as DIDCOM protocols. I went through the adopted and accepted. Most of those would fall into the AIP2 features. So um, they probably, um, relevant ones are in AIP2 already, so they're already covered. Evaluate the rest if they need to move to um, DIFF and accepted would be the same. Um, and, and really demonstrated and even proposed might go the same. Remember that we did edit out a whole bunch of these ones and move them to stalled. And so those stalled ones would stay as frozen. But there are some good ones in demonstrated and proposed that are are, are in active use, such as the OCA, OCA ones that might go to OWF or perhaps over, you know, to be, to be determined where they go. Um, so Aries RFC and um, Aries Agent Test Harness, there's discussions to happen on those. Any comments on what I said there, Patrick? 
Um, I kind of grown to the idea of moving the Aries agent of test harness to diff. I think um, making it into a didcom test harness makes a lot of sense because that's what it is accurately in the project itself to so just keep focusing on that. This being said, I think there's also a need for a sort of broader interrupt test harness at the Open yeah. Wallet Foundation. And yeah. I do like the structure of the test harness, the, you know, sort of how it works, the, the idea, I think it's currently one of the best for like multi-party interoperability testing. Um, so maybe there's okay. going to be like two test harness, but just one. Exactly. So maybe, maybe rename it the... like didcom agent test harness, something like that, yeah. or just didcom test harness, don't even need the agent in there. Yeah, yeah. And so it did come test harness at diff and then um a, a, a similar type for other other than did com type. Colton. I really didn't want to hijack what your your presentation here, but I did want to mention because you keep interop has been mentioned a whole lot uh, yeah. throughout this. And I did want to mention that uh through the didcom users group, I've been trying to organize and plan a Interopathon for Didcom V2, just the basics. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to get, you know, uh, you know, get to the point where Akapai could, could could participate in a Didcom 2. So I'm looking forward to that. I sort of think on the on the test harness, like I don't know about the technical aspects of it, but having having it or a fork in OWF that could be expanded to other protocols would be, I think, kind of a powerful, you know, almost marketing tool as well, mm -hmm. because it would expose hopefully more people to Didcom, but also show that we could do, excuse me, um, maybe, you know, the open ID protocols and use that to hand over a didcom invitation and so forth yeah just show right. a much bigger picture i really like that because then you've got the base that's always maintained at the diff but then you have the extra features maintained elsewhere yeah could be yeah okay so that's a big one for tomorrow think about that one and and let's have that in the broader community aries rfcs likewise what else? Oh yeah, the profiles. And I, I touched on this earlier. Um, I, I really, my thinking evolved as I wrote this. And so um, AIP2 has been, you know, AIPs have been very effective, um, not perfect, but, but pretty effective at getting a common understanding. And so we really want to keep profiles and keep them front and center. I do like the idea, um, Patrick mentioned that we need more than one Pro profile. There's not just one that will happen. That an ecosystem will choose a pro profile. So we shouldn't have too many of them. But, but you know, we can definitely um, have um, have more than one. And so wallet interop profiles and building on what the Dutch have done. There's a there's a Netherlands um, blockchain coalition, I believe, or or something like that that created um, uh, an interop profile. The Swiss have it, their interop profile that they're building, the EU as well. So um, create, my my thought would be to create something within OWF as wallet interop profiles that include, that covers sort of um, uh, a, a different set so that people could claim um, which one they were using and and but but we would have a group focused on on interop and building interop cross profiles um related projects um again this isn't necessarily an aries question but it certainly is related to the aries community so um i think indy clearly stays at hyperledger lfdt um it is a ledger and 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 so that's that should be um, and non creds v1 definitely needs a home um and and i see a couple of options there move with lfdt move to the diff applied cryptography group this is the v1 spec and implementations that exist and that are being used and and are are you know have have proven over time to be valuable um and, and on creds v2 
I think we're going to have to combine it with other ZKP efforts in the community. There's a, a, a number of them starting up, and I think that's where that's going to go. So there's sort of a separation of um, of the non-creds V1 as it is, uh, it, it is complete used and and valuable and then in on-creds v2 is still evolving and as is a, a bunch of other zkp efforts and and i'd really like to find a way to get those to to work together um yeah so those are my thoughts on that one um i don't know uh sean i don't know if you know what's happening with hyperledger labs and what um what its future is uh labs are going to continue um they'll be under the hyperledger umbrella until such time as they meet the criteria for graduating and then um a discussion would be had with that lab as to what the where the right place for them within lfdt or elsewhere would be mm -hmm. but labs the lab yeah. program at hyperledger is not ending okay so the agora uh cryptography libraries are currently in Hyperledger Labs. Um, yep. Those are important in that they've got, um, they both are cryptography primitives that have been, many of them have been audited and that's an important um, addition to the um, to the equation. So those yes. are valuable. Yeah. So just in general, our policy is we support the maintainers uh, and the projects. So if uh, the Agora Lab is happy where they are, great. If the Agora Lab wants to move, anything we can do to help them, we're going to do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I had this conversation with another project to move to OWF last year. Oh, were you guys mad at us for leaving? No. We, we love the work that you've done. And the fact that you feel that your that project felt that it was better placed at OWF for its growth, we're all for it. And whatever we need to do to to keep that momentum going, we're going to do. So as far as any of the labs, but specifically Agora, it's up to that community as to whether they stay, they're more than welcome, or if they decide to move, we are we will do what we have to do to, to help them out. So, yeah. All right. Um, this would be the wrap up for tomorrow's and again would be for the Aries community to make more decisions on some of these topics that have come up through here. Um, we've reached consensus and again with the caveat that Daniel correctly brought up of um, Akapai's made its call. The Akapai community has made its call that it wants to apply, um, but what other decisions will come up. So we, you, everyone here has a has a head start on tomorrow's discussion, so you can prepare um, your points and and discussions ahead. But um, that's where we'll go, and we'll hopefully fill out um, some of these slide, some of this slide um, at, at the meeting. Uh, la last point, I, I think I brought this up yeah. the last series meeting, but something to keep in mind would also be sort of uh, everything documentation related after the fact, right? Which uh, can be pretty extensive, uh, uh, depending, you know, what happened with the, the term Aries, you know, every time we refer to Aries, I guess we could just leave it as is, and it, it's going to be like a uh, understanding, um, but, you know, project renaming and so on. Yeah. All right. Anyone want a final comment? Um, I've been thinking about integration testing, like actually in Akapai. Yeah. A mm -hmm. lot. And I basically like we have these integration tests that are using uh, the same kind of pattern as the test harness. And I think we should almost, like we don't have to remove them or anything, but I think we should almost stop testing that way and test all the interop RFC stuff from test harness and run the test from Akapai. Mm. And we should have, instead we should have 
uh, basically like I was in DCO has the minimal controller that they do tests with. And when I was testing some of this stuff recently with the, in that tools, like it's super useful. You can do like a lot more with it and it's a lot easier to cover stuff. I'm wondering if either we should try to make like our own minimal agent or if we can possibly use Indicio's agent to start writing integration tests that way. But I think in some ways like these tests, um, DidX is doing it too, basically doing the same thing. And these tests are covering a lot more uh, than what we're doing right now with the integration test. I'm kind of working on something, but I just uh, didn't know if we could use their agent or what the thoughts are on that. Like we could almost make a fork and use it from Akapai or something. Yeah. 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 To speak for Indicio, at least then in that we created that code, we'd be happy to move it wherever it's useful, to be honest. Um, we, we find it useful and, and getting more people using it, I think is, is good for, for that usability. So we'd be happy with it wherever it is. Akapai okay. tools, Akapai plugins for its own. What or do you think? Um, like I was thinking actually having it like, like pulling it into Akapai okay. and then running the integrate, like have integration test suite, but just basically pull it into the, into Akapai. Okay. Anyway, I have to think about it a little bit more, but, um, yeah, yeah, I think we need to have those types of tests actually from Akapai instead of relying on these third parties. Okay. Sounds good. I'll okay. keep working on that then and have a I'll explain it better, but um Brian. One thing to think about in terms of um not so much what comes over uh as how it's grouped, uh whether it's OWF or other places, but particularly OWF is that um, grouping things by logical function obviously is a good starting point, but um, I think you also want to think about collective ownership, like the right level of scale, level of granularity of a, of a project might be here is a set of things that are built by one cohesive set of developers who care about all the stuff working with each other, but also if a security hole pops up in one part of it, you know, even if it's not their part, they're willing to, you know, the, the core developers on the project, somebody will jump in and address the security issue and, and, um, and come back. Right. And so rather than having 20 different, you know, new projects, 20 different new repositories, it might be just as you're also looking at retiring some of them or arch archiving some of them, consolidating a couple of these different efforts into one project under OWF um, might make some sense. And that and they can still remain separate repos. We can have more than one repo per project, um, yeah. but just for explainability reasons, just consider consolidation. Yeah. It, that's been the challenge though, Brian, that's exactly the challenge Ares has really had is we've had over time, six, seven different frameworks within Ares and those ones that we talked about that are outside, Identis, Faramo, all of them have operated independently. All of them have had their own set of maintainers, um, their own priorities um, and, and roadmap. And, and so that's kind of the idea of why we're thinking we might as well not try to bring over Aries as a group, but rather move them independently is because they really always have been independent. That, that makes sense. I just, um, you know, one of the most precious things in this in this space is developer attention. And exactly. especially when somebody is diving into a new community uh, yeah. uh, and trying to learn about what are the dependencies, what are the other things I have to come up to speed on in order to compete. So the biggest gift that you can give people <laughs> to those new developers coming in is to retire mothball stuff that is, you know, not not as distinguishing or, or not as needed as, yeah. as, as others. 
Amen. <laughs> it always rankles me a bit when when we start up a new project or 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 bring things out that are really so close to being the same and yet oh but i want to put my spin on it um it's frustrating but um yeah okay all right that's a wrap on that um we only have seven minutes left um patrick do you have time in that or do you want to defer till the next meeting uh, I, I guess we can defer to the next meeting and uh, that's going to allow people to ask more questions. Maybe we can talk about uh, removing the deprecated AP1 yeah, protocol. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, yeah. yeah, we could probably have a short conversation there. So um super excited to see Daniel bringing to fruition his idea. Um, so those who didn't follow the PRs from yesterday, <laughs> you got to stay up to date. Um, Daniel put in two PRs, a plugin that is the connections protocol and a PR to Akapi to remove the connections protocol from Akapi. So what that allows, and Daniel jump in, allows um, a, a deployment to continue to run connections protocol, but to do so, they have to bring in the plugin because it's not part of the core anymore. Daniel? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I got pretty far along that process. Um, I'm to the point where uh, I have tests failing for silly reasons as opposed to like, you know, real consequential reasons, I suppose, within within Akapai and, and that PR. Uh, the plugin PR itself will need more time uh, to get it hooked up again, um, because connections has been, you know, it's it's a bit of a unique protocol in the sense that it was kind of core to the functioning of many other things within Akapi. Um, there was, uh, you know, a lot of changes that occurred when we introduced Did Exchange, um, and then since that time, we've supported either connections or did exchange or either connections invitations or out of band invitations. Um, and so going through and removing those things uh, means that the plugin will have to re-add back in some of those operations, um, which actually brought up a, a question that I, I was hoping to raise with everybody, which is, is the plugin approach the right way to go about doing it for at least the connections protocol? Um, because uh, with the introduction of long-term service releases, does that offer enough runway to the people who strictly need connections protocol still? Uh, is that enough for them to, yeah. to just yeah. be able to run on those LTS releases? Um, hmm. Because uh, some of the my thinking there is that the plugin, because we'll have to add new code to reintroduce stuff that we've ripped out of the core, there's going to be overhead on the plugin like we, we can't just take the plugin the, or the protocol out and put it into a plugin there's like some additional code that needs to be written um so there's going to be a slightly increased maintenance burden uh to make sure that that still functions over time and, and is um, that specific to connections because of I, its core role right i think it is uh okay. issue credential v1 present proof v1 i think those would be much easier uh to remove okay. from core and put into a plugin I haven't gone through the process yet to yeah. to see if that's true or not, uh, but I think it is um, because those were much more self-contained uh, pieces, right? I, I think the greatest overlap that we might experience some heartache in will be in revocations of a non-creds credentials. Um, that's like the only kind of leaky part that I see for those two. Okay. Um, but yeah, so connections is kind of the odd one out in this case. Okay. Um, okay, Patrick, go ahead. Um, so we got 1.0. There's a long-term support in place. Um, my initial thought is that it should be fine. At least the deprecator would want to just remove them. Uh, people that already have existing system can use 1.0 and start working on migrating towards the new one. 
my question, my concern would be if they use 1.0 and there's a long-term support in place and then there is a problem in the issue protocol V1, mm -hmm. um, what, like, how would that play? Like, how would we release, would we release like a 1.0 patch 0 0.1, something like that? Or how yeah, does that's what these... long-term support means. It's, it doesn't mean, okay. long-term support means that we declare whatever, 1.0. 0, 1 as the LTS. Um, it, it, it actually means we're declaring 1.0 as the LTS. Yeah. And and so we would continue to release uh, 2, 3, 4 as patches to the 1.0. So pulling not from the main branch, but rather mm -hmm. cherry picking from the main branch and putting it into the 1.0 branch. So uh, an LTS basically means we're going to have a branch and we're going to independently update it separate from main to produce uh, additional releases, patch releases. No new and functionality, no minor or major functionality, just patch releases. So if we think about moving forward, right? So eventually we can maybe foresee a 2.0 release eventually, hopefully. Like how does that work if the one point something is like a patch of 1.0 and you need to maintain these features let's say uh you know we want to move forward we want to you know get rid of the data model 1.1 we want to get rid of the issue credential v1 and sort of you know bring akapai up to date because i think maintaining everything is going to become super bloated and it's already creating some you know, developer sort of puzzles or you, you need to kind of code around existing code to make it work and it, it ultimately creates like, um, yeah. so, maybe code so that's not optimal. Is, so the point is we would deprecate things, as announce deprecations, which we've done, Yeah. Uh, remove them. And the L, so they've got two strategies they can use. One is we can put them into plugins and yep. so they can continue to use the plugins, but they're removed from the core. So the, the core no longer has to worry about them. They can continue to use the LTS as long as they um, mm -hmm. go on. And then they've got a runway to migrate away from using these deprecated um, functionality. For connections, by the way, I'd throw out, Daniel, I think a plugin plus a document that says, here's what you're going to have to do to your deployment if you want to use it. Um, I don't think that's the end of the world for connections specifically um, of of saying, oh, there's some additional things you've got to put into the code um, for as a special case for it. Um, but that, you know, you've got a few options, but the whole goal is to prune out the thing so we don't have this um, extra stuff that we've got to maintain long term. Now, you, you do need to read that LTS documentation that pretty um Together and and we just at the end to say we've got a dog barking. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, uh, it, it, it. That that says you know here's how we decide what goes into a patch and release. Um, it really comes down to security vulnerabilities and yeah. bugs that we think are worth cherry picking off main because um, they're necessary. That's that. That's all we do, and we just cherry pick off of main any uh, any of those pieces. All right, we're at time, so we'll call it. Um, thanks for the discussion, um, and please join us tomorrow at the Aries Working Group meeting to finish off a bunch of those discussions to do with um, how to move forward now that we've made the call that we're going to apply to um, move Akapai to OWF. I think I missed the beginning, Stephen, but I guess, did we celebrate a little bit 1.0? We did. We did. Okay, good. A little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, 1.0 is out there. Yes. It's a big step. It is a big step. All right. Thanks, all. That was a great meeting. Good discussion. Thanks, Thank everybody. you. Thanks. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye.